Hi, I'm Sean, and today we're going to be working through a previous trigonometry question. Uh, for more maths resources or loads of other subjects, go to studytext.ie. Okay, so here's our question. We're given this uh, diagram of the Earth here on the right, and we're to take it, it says, as a sphere with radius uh, 6,371 kilometers. Uh, we're given that Jack is standing at the cliffs of Moher at the point J, which is 214 meters above sea level. And we're told he's looking out to sea at a point uh, H on the horizon. So taking A as the center, we've got to find the length GH, uh, the distance from Jack to the horizon, and give it to the nearest kilometer. So this is actually very simple. Uh, basically what we're going to do is uh, make the base assumption that the angle AHJ, which is in here, is a right angle. And the reason we can make that assumption is because uh, every tangent to a circle, which includes the line JH, obviously, is going to be uh, perpendicular to the radius of the circle joined to that point, which is AH. And that means that basically, if it's perpendicular, uh, we have a 90 degree angle uh, between those two lines. So it does rely on that little piece of knowledge that you know basically that uh, this line is perpendicular and therefore we have a right angle and we can just use Pythagoras, Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, so they do rely on you knowing that you can just uh, use Pythagoras' theorem because we have a right angle triangle here. Of course, you know, there's no other way to do this because you're not given enough information about the angles to do it any other way. Uh, so uh, given that, we can say that AH is obviously 6,371 kilometers. And AJ is also that because we've got the radius included in that length as well, at uh, plus 214 meters. And that means that AJ is equal to 6,371.214 kilometers. Obviously where the 0.214 is coming from those additional meters. So uh, given that we have these lengths AH and AJ, we can now say that because AJ is along the side in the triangle and um, because it's opposite the right angle, that we put that on one side and square that, and then take away from that the squared length of AH, we will be left with JH to be squared, which obviously we can find the square root of. So JH to be squared then is equal to 6,371.214 to be squared minus 6,371 to be squared. And I think you'll find it surprising just how big this difference actually ends up being. You know, given that it seems like a pretty minuscule difference, but when you're dealing with numbers this big, uh, you know, it actually does make quite a large difference when you square things like this. So then that is going to leave us with the fact that JH is equal to the square root of the right hand side of the equation above. So we're just going to put that in the calculator now and see what our number is going to be. So our answer is 52.219 kilometers, which because we've got to correct it to the nearest uh, kilometer is going to give us an answer of 52 kilometers. So that's it for part A. I would say a very easy uh, part of the question. The only thing difficult about this maybe would have been about the tangent of the circle and why you're able to use Pythagoras, but beyond that it was pretty easy and it's going to be worth 15 marks. So part B tells us that the cliffs of Moher at point C are at latitude 53 degrees north of the equator. On the diagram uh, we have S1, which is a circle that is at that latitude. So it's basically like a disc inside the sphere, uh, but it's going to be above the center. So it's, you know, obviously up above uh, 53 degrees north of the center. We're told that F S2 represents the equator itself. And of course, A is the center of the Earth. Uh, they're on parallel planes, which is very important. And we've got to find the length of the circle S1 and give this correct to the nearest kilometer. Okay, so we're looking for the length of the circle or the uh, circumference of the circle S1. And naturally, to find the circumference, it makes sense to try and find the radius, uh, first of all, because to find the circumference given the radius, we just got to multiply it by 2 pi. So the radius uh, in our diagram is basically going to be this line between S1 and C. At least that's the one that we should be uh, using to find the result. So given that this line exists and we're told that S1 and S2 are on parallel planes, we can say that because the, this angle here is 53 degrees, uh, this angle created by uh, S1 and C being joined, as well as C and S2 being joined, is also 53 degrees. So if we call that the angle X, we could say that X is equal to 53 degrees. 
And uh, that makes this really straightforward because we already know the length AC is the length of radius, uh, 6,371 kilometers, which means that because this is a right angle again, or S1, S2 is perpendicular to the line S1C, we can basically get a relationship here involving cosine, uh, whereby we can say that cos 53 degrees is equal to R over 6,371, because the radius R of S1 up here in the diagram is adjacent to the angle, and 6,371 is the hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle, uh, close to S1 as well. Now you could also say that sine 37 degrees is equal to R over 6,371, again, because we know the value of at uh, this angle in here is going to be 90 minus 53 and therefore you could also use that uh, so really whichever you prefer but i'm going to proceed with cos 53 degrees anyways so that means that the radius is equal to 6371 times cos 53 degrees and the value of this is 3834.1635 so that's the radius but we're actually not done because we're looking for the length so we need the circumference and to do that, we're basically going to multiply this value for our radius by 2 pi, and that is going to give us a nice answer for the circumference. So the radius multiplied by 2 pi is going to give us 24,090.759, which correctly the nearest kilometer is going to be 24,091 kilometers. So that is the length of S1, and that is actually it for part B. So once again, not too difficult. I really like this question, actually. I think it's pretty much the most manageable question you could ask for. On anything trigonometry related. I think this could probably even come up on the junior cert. And part B is going to be worth 10 marks by the way. But I do hope you did enjoy the video. If you did there's going to be other similar videos in the description, you know, on similar topics and type of questions and, and all that, uh, as well as some notes and everything just to help you out if you're feeling a bit stuck. And uh, with that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.